Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here with another vintage G.I. Joe action figure toy review. And before we get started, I want to remind everybody to smash that subscribe button. Uh, if you're watching this video uh, on some website other than YouTube, uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you would just take a little trip over to YouTube and the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 channel and subscribe. Uh, and also, if you like this video, uh, hit that little thumbs up, and that would be greatly appreciated. So, um, I'm doing these toy reviews of the early... G.I. Joe action figures, and um, eventually I'd like to have a full catalog of G.I. Joe toy reviews. Uh, and it's tempting to just do all of my favorite toys first, um, and then save the ones that I don't like quite as much toward the end. But really, it would be better if I mix it up a little bit. Uh, that way, you know, I have some really great toys to review later on. Well, what that means, though, is that inevitably this has to happen. I have to do a toy review of one of the action figures that I really don't care for quite as much, and that would be Tripwire. Nothing personal against Tripwire, and if Tripwire is one of your favorite action figures, then I have no criticism. It's perfectly fine. I, I hope that you continue to enjoy Tripwire even after this review. Uh, but I have to admit, Tripwire was never one of my favorite action figures. And I'll, in this video, I will go over a few reasons why that is. So, Tripwire was, uh, was released in 1983 as part of the second series of G.I. Joe action figures. Uh, he was also released in 1984 and discontinued in 1985. There were a couple later versions of Tripwire released in the Vintage line, uh, one of which was the Listen and Fun Tripwire, uh, which was the same mold as this original tri Tripwire, but with some really shockingly different colors. There was also a Tiger Force Tripwire, which again was the same mold, but with a different paint job. Uh, and in the UK, in Action Force, the same mold of Tripwire was released as a, a, a figure called Blades, who was an SAS helicopter pilot. Let's take a look first at Tripwire's accessories. Most prominent is his mine detector, his metal detector style mine detector. And this is based on a Polish design that was made in World War II. And this particular model looks somewhat like the F3 mine detector, but it couldn't, of course, be the F3 because I believe the F3 is much more modern than this. This figure was released in 1983, so if this is modeled after a real-world mine detector, uh, it would be something from that era, something that was used in the early 80s. Uh, it is connected to the backpack, via this plastic wire that's connected to the top here, and these do break, so be careful with these. It's got some flexibility to it, um, and it does reach around to the uh, hole in the back of the backpack and fit in there. Uh, there were some other G.I. Joe action figures with this wire feature, uh, especially in 1982, like, like Flash here, who had uh, his uh, laser rifle connected to his backpack through the same type of wire. Later G.I. Joe action figures didn't really have this type of wire. Uh, a lot of them had like a, a, a rubber black tube um, that connected their weapons to their backpacks and, and it worked a, a lot better I think than these old plastic wires did but in 1983 they were still using these. He has a backpack and the backpack in contains the electronics for the mine detector. It plugs in there. And the backpack includes three mines, which you can take out like so. And take all, out all three of them and you can set them out for someone to step on and get blown up, I guess. These are anti-personnel mines, and they are tiny, uh, so these do get lost. If you're looking for a tripwire, you'll need to 
uh, if, if you want to get a complete tripwire with his accessories, you'll need to watch out for these mines and make sure that all of them are included. Uh, these anti-personnel mines, I'm not sure if these are a copy of a particular real-world mine, but they do have some kind of realistic detail. Let's take a look at the figure itself. Tripwire had the typical 1983 G.I. Joe action figure articulation, which meant that he could turn his head from side to side. Later versions of G.I. Joe action figures had a ball joint in the neck so they could look up and down as well as turn side to side, but these 1983 versions could just turn their heads left and right there. The arms, the arms could swing out at the shoulders and could turn all the way around, had articulation at the elbow, so he could move his elbow about 90 degrees. And uh, Starting in 1983, all of the G.I. Joe action figures had swivel arm battle grip, which was this extra articulation at the bicep, which would allow the arm to swing around like that, uh, which was nice because it allowed them to hold their weapon and uh, weapons and equipment with a two-handed grip, whereas the early versions of G.I. Joe, the ones that came out in 1982, did not have that articulation at the bicep. They could only turn, move at the elbow, which made holding some of the weapons a little bit more awkward. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that allowed him to move at the torso a little bit. He could move his legs at the hip about 90 degrees, and of course he could bend his knees. Let's look at the sculpt of Tripwire. He has uh, this molded on helmet. Uh, the helmet is not removable, which is unfortunate because I, I really, when you've got a, a face that's covered by a helmet and goggles like this, I really like to have those removable because when I was playing with G.I. Joe as a kid, uh, I would have my figures in situations that were not necessarily combat situations, so I would prefer to not have the helmet on so that they could, you know, hang out with the other Joes and not be in their full combat gear. It just doesn't make sense for him to have his helmet on when he's, you know, at the headquarters. But, uh, but no, it's, uh, it, he's eternally wearing his helmet and goggles. Uh, he's got some pads uh, on his body, on his front, um, and of course I guess to protect him from any potential blasts as he's uh, defusing mines and detecting mines. He has uh, gloves and boots that are a different color from the pads, and I, I kind of like the contrast, the light gray to dark gray contrast. I think it would have been a mistake if they had made the gloves and the boots the same color gray as the pads. So uh, that's nice. It's 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 not a bad thing. He does have a, a pistol um, sculpted onto his thigh here, and that is his only weapon, the sidearm that we don't actually get to play with because it's sculpted onto his leg. Looking at the color scheme, well, I have to admit it's really kind of blah. It's, uh, we have the, the army green, which is not a bad thing, but, uh, and we have some gray, and the, the, the contrast between the two colors of gray is nice. Glad to have that, and I would have missed it if it weren't there. But overall, it's, it's really kind of a plain color scheme. He has on his right arm, uh, rank insignia, which looks like upside down sergeant's chevrons which, uh, even if they were the right side up, they would not be the right rank insignia for Tripwire, who is, uh, according to his file card, an E4 specialist in the Army. So, even if these were the right way up, it still would be wrong. Let's look at the file card and the packaging for Tripwire. I have uh, the upper half of the original card back that he came on, which I don't normally get with these action figures, so this is just kind of a bonus. You can see more of the card art. Uh, here's the file card and the uh, f rest of the front side of the 
original carded packaging. Um, as you can see, this was $2.97 at Kmart in 1983. And as with all of the other carded action figures, Tripwire was worth one flag point. You were encouraged to cut these flag points out and send them in for some special mail away offers. And you were also encouraged to cut out these the file cards that gave some information about the character that is represented by this action figure. Taking a look at the file card, it says he is a mind detector, codenamed Tripwire. His file name is Tormod S. Skoog, which is kind of a funny name. I looked it up and Skoog is actually uh, a Swedish name and Tormod is of Norwegian origin and his birthplace is Hibbing, Minnesota. Uh, and it just made me think of Garrison Keillor and the Norwegian bachelor farmers. Uh, his pay grade is E4, again, specialist. Uh, primary military specialty, explosive ordnance disposal. Secondary military specialty, demolitions. So this is a guy who works with explosives, and you would expect him to be a very careful individual, considering that he works with dangerous objects. But the file card, and as he appeared in the, in the comic book, uh, he's actually quite clumsy. Reading the file card and seeing how he's presented in the comic book basically makes it seem like Tripwire is a bit of comic relief. Reading about his background, it says, Tripwire dropped out of high school at a naval base in Yokosuka, Japan. Uh, father is career, career Navy. Spent two years in a Zen monastery pondering the meaning of life. Expelled for breaking too many dishes and spilling every conceivable liquid. Joined the army at 19 and received spiritual awake awakening on the grenade range. Proficient in all NATO and Warsaw Pact explosives, detonators, ignition, uh, ignition in initiators, and blasting machines. Qualified expert, M1911A auto pistol, which I assume is, uh, is that. This bottom section tells us a little bit more about his personality. It says, Tripwire freaks people out. He's always clumsy, jittery, and dropping things, except when he's working with high explosives. Explosives are the only things that calm him down. So, uh, yeah, Tripwire in uh, the comic book was portrayed as something of a klutz. But when it came time for some serious business with explosives, he was always dependable. But being a bit clumsy, of course, uh, he uh, provided a little bit of uh, levity, a little bit of comedy in an otherwise serious stories. Now, a problem that I have with mines as weapons is that... Uh, they are just as likely, if not more likely, to kill non-combatants as they are to kill the enemy. Because these things get left behind on battlefields and can kill people years after the original conflict is over. Uh, they just lie around there waiting for some kid to step on and blow up. Now you could say that these mines come with tripwire because, you know, he found them in the field and he has uh, uh, defused them. That's His purpose is, after all, a mine detector. Uh, but that's not the case. These are actually mines that he carries with the intent of uh, placing them in the field for, uh, to, you know, blow up the enemy. Uh, there's a scene in the G.I. Joe comic book in which um, he is carrying his backpack and ends up tripping, of course, because he's a bit clumsy. Um, and his backpack is already filled with these mines. He didn't find them somewhere and uh, pick them up and defuse them. So these are intended um, for, uh, for offensive use. There is an international treaty to ban the use of anti-personnel mines. Uh, that treaty is not beyond criticism, but it's uh, not hard to argue that the use of mines is, you know, ethically questionable at least. As far as the United States goes, um, the U.S. has kind of compromised between uh, a total ban on the use of anti-personnel mines uh, and, you know, having their effectiveness in the field as a, a way to deny certain territory to, to the enemy. Uh, the U.S. uses mines now that self-destruct after a certain period of time, 
so that it reduces the possibility that years later some farmer is going to be plowing the field and get his face blown off by this mine that was left there years before and any enemy that it might have blown up is long gone. Despite the fact that Tripwire comes with these ethically questionable weapons, he really is a mine detector, not a mine layer, and so uh, I can appreciate him in that role. But looking at Tripwire, I, I really... I still, I, I, I didn't really appreciate him as a kid, and even as an adult, I still think that this is a remarkably plain figure. And that's saying a lot, considering the 1982 G.I. Joe action figures were, you know, very plain compared to the figures that came later. Um, Tripwire is almost a, a throwback to the 1982 figures, in that, of course, he's green, which I don't object to, I actually prefer the military colors, but... Uh, there just isn't a whole lot going on here. Uh, he doesn't come with any guns, which means that, you know, in a combat situation, he can, he can detect mines, and that's about it. Now, there were other figures that didn't come with guns, like Doc, uh, but I th th Doc is a more interesting character to me than Tripwire. Tripwire just really never sparked my uh, imagination. Uh, the comic book, unfortunately, gives him more to do than just going around the battlefield looking for landmines. Uh, and that's fortunate. The comic book made better use of Tripwire than maybe I did as a kid playing with him. Um, but I still think that the design and the colors are very blah. Um, and, you know, as comic relief in the comic book, I guess he worked pretty well. He was able to provide a little bit of humor without being completely ridiculous. So that was my review of the 1983 Tripwire. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're thinking about getting Tripwire, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, and uh, so basically, I've done a review of a figure that I don't care for, so now for the next video, I can get back to doing uh, something, a character, a, a figure, or, or a vehicle that I really love. Something I can really get into. So, so now, uh, next week, we're going to have something, I think, a lot more fun. So uh, make sure that you hit that subscribe button uh, so that you don't miss it. And make sure you, you hit that like button uh, so that I can know that you dig this video. Uh, and stay tuned because we're going to move on to some really cool stuff next time. Thank you again for watching.